talk to my wonderful daughter. Aww. I'm going to talk to my wonderful daughter. Aww. And you can listen. <laughs> <laughs> my comments are to her, me, for me. Right. Let me start. As life started. Roger, Roger, it's a girl. <laughs> Mum was determined that I should hear it first. She beat the weak wife. Those words echoed on my heart. I remember hearing tales of the ladies' coffee mornings on song when each mother extolled their children with certain uniqueness. Your ability to tidy a room as you, as you walked through it was a fantastic help. <laughs> Dad, please let Suzanne leave my things alone. I cannot find what I'm looking for. How often I've heard that. Silently amused, I was proud and grateful. That's my girl. <laughs> right. Uh, last week, I was clearing my desk for a change, and I came across <laughs> Ashley Harris annual report. <laughs> the first, <laughs> the autumn of the year 1975, <laughs> name Suzanne Paul. Suzanne has shown that she can do things good, do, sorry, Suzanne has shown that she, she could do good work and her progress in most subjects was very satisfactory. Oh. M. E. Hunter, headmistress. Later on, as life progressed, we come to the summer of 1977. <laughs> Suzanne willingly and cheerfully carries out any extra duties she is asked to, and she has developed a greater sense of understanding as a matter of fact. You need is over. You embarked on a career. The world was your oyster, literally, as well. You always kept in touch, and your letters were a treasure and very amusing at times. <laughs> As time went by, Mom succumbed to human frailty, and you were there. I am eternally grateful. No father can ask for anything more. Excelsior, I say to you, and wish you continued success in your career. Mm -hmm. And coming from a wonderful family, I was so lucky, I wish you the same. And I express it this way. May the love that brought you and Brookie together enrich this marriage, both as husband, wife, and loving parents, always and thereafter. Raise our glasses, Susie and Brooke. <laughs> Brilliant speech. <laughs>
<laughs> no pressure then. <laughs> well, for, one in, for once in my life, I'm more than happy to stick with tradition. Um, well, well, well. Take it back. <laughs> Who ever thought it would actually happen? <laughs> so, so, here are the words you've been waiting to hear. My wife and I. You obviously enjoyed that, I'll say it again. My wife and I. Actually, I can't speak on behalf of my wife because she's got her own words to say, so I'll just continue with what I've got to say. <laughs> You've made it possible for me to marry your beautiful daughter, and I'm so proud. Now, I remember the first time I met Roger and Helen. Um, it was round at Gavin's house, and uh, I was given an absolute grilling. <laughs> Seriously, I, you know, I thought I was being interviewed for the, for the role of Prime Minister or something. It was, it was unbelievable. And somehow or other, I managed to get on the right side of, of Helen especially, and Roger. And to be honest, it's, since then it's been a two-way street because they have been the most amazing and supportive in-laws. Uh, and I love them to bits. Um, but I'd like to pay tribute to my mum. Um, I had a tear in my eye. Well, I cried earlier. I looked, at, I looked over at Dereen, um, matriarch of. Dereen. I looked over at Dereen, and Dereen was best friends to my mum. And I just, when I looked at you, love earlier, I just broke down. And she couldn't be here today, but, but you are, and I'm so, so pleased with that. Um, I know it's a trite thing to say that parents just want the best for their kids, but without my mum's support, um, you know, we as a family wouldn't have the lifestyle we have. Uh, it was only a few days after Susie and I got engaged, actually, that, that Mum was diagnosed with, with cancer. And I know she was overjoyed about the fact I was finally going to make an honest one with Susie. Um, even if she did manage to forget Susie's name quite regularly. It was a constant embarrassment to me. Mum, <laughs> Sorry, kids, for that. I was going to say, you know, she's the mother of your grandchildren, but at least try and get a better name. It's called Wife Susie. When I, saw you, when, I, when I saw you walk down those stairs today, I knew I was the luckiest man alive. You were so beautiful. <laughs> when I think of Susie, I often ask myself, is there anything I would change? And I can honestly say, nothing. Guess who was told that the best, that the, the, the groom's speech didn't exist without those words. I, I first clapped eyes on Susie at a, a friend's dinner party and I was absolutely smitten. And. Um, and nothing happened that night. Apparently, you have to talk to a girl before you got a chance to. Suzanne. Oh no, yeah, that's so cute. Oh, we're all making chains. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Queen. Happy birthday to you. Friends have been asking why Brookie and I decided to get married today after being together for 14 years. Well, as many of you know, Brookie's been asking me for years to get married. <laughs> and I always said, no, I was happy as I was. Stop. You know, so. so he stopped asking me. And then a couple of years ago, I thought, oh, I'd like to get married to Brookie. So I thought, I'll prompt him. <laughs> so this is a story he was going to tell, but he might have told it differently. <laughs> so on his 50th birthday, I said to him, are you happy? Said, yes, I'm very happy. Are you really happy? <laughs> yes, he said, I'm really happy, with a puzzled expression. And then I thought, I am not going to ask him to marry me. He needs to ask me. So I'll try a different time. Have you got everything that you want? <laughs> yes, he said.
it. I've got everything that I want. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Absolutely sure you've got everything you want. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we're all here today. Uh, so the moral of the story is, persevere for something that you really want. Um, there are several people here today. I'd like to thank, firstly, my dad, um, for making this day possible. Uh, I know mum is very much here in our hearts and minds. We're all thinking about her. I'd also like to thank my wonderful bridesmaids, Molly, <laughs> Yvonne and Janice. Thank you for being my bride. <laughs> You've been such an important part of my life over the last few years. So I want to thank you. I also want to thank Karen, Sue and Mel. Karen. Where are you, Karen? Thank you. the hint. I'm <laughs> proposing. So please raise your glasses to Brookie. I've got my speech. Have you got yours, Leo? <laughs> Let's see your speech. Uh, right, right. I think you put a bit more time and effort into your speech, haven't you? Uh, I've always known all along that you're going to upstage me all the way through the speech. Okay, do you want to sit down? <laughs> Thank you. I tell you what, Molly's nearly at university uh, and Leo's nearly discovered alcohol. <laughs> anyway, you've really dragged this out. Will they? Won't they? Will they? Won't they? But we're finally here, so thank you, family. And Brookie has given Susie what she always wanted. Unlimited shopping access to someone's <laughs> credit card. Uh, this is the woman who on her marriage certificate gave us her address, the Trafford Centre. Leo, <laughs> over to you. My mum rocks. <laughs> Leo, would you give us the tour? Toast, please. Forty minutes. Whoever's got the closest to forty minutes is the winner. 